Oh, that looks so good. Welcome back, everybody. I'm sorry for the few week delay. I was sick as balls for a good week and a half. And then I had to deal with the printing and release of my new clothing brand, North, which is something we'll talk about in a future video. But yeah, that took up a lot of my headspace. We're past it. We're ready to get back to smashing out some YouTube videos. I'm happy to say things are finally starting to turn around here in the new shop. The DTG has been killing it the entire time. I actually started working on the embroidery machine a little bit so that we can bring that thing back in the very near future. I've very extensively tested and used the new manual press over the past couple of weeks and that's been great so far so that's a big stress reliever so that brings me to the next thing <laughs> The new auto. I've been using this thing off and on for the past little while doing kind of simple things just to cut my teeth on it, but I've yet to film a video with it. And that's because this is not a normal shop situation where you get an auto, you train, you learn how to use it and away you go. Not only do I have to learn how to use it, but I have to learn how to use it and film it at the same time. Filming and making a good screen printing video with a manual press is hard enough. Trust me, I've been doing it for a very long time now and I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. I have broken many cameras and lenses, thousands and thousands thousands of dollars worth of gear by forgetting it's in the way, it's spinning the press, knocking it over, something like that, or paying more attention to the filming side than the printing side and fucking up a bunch of shirts. Like there's a lot that can go wrong when you make these videos. Now take all of those problems that can happen when filming on a manual press and multiply them by 100, 200, maybe even more on an auto because now I can mess up hundreds of shirts in a short amount of time. Plus. This is a big piece of moving machinery. It is dangerous. If I get in the zone filming and I forget that this thing's running and get between it, I'm gonna get hurt. Or if a camera's somewhere it shouldn't be while it's still running, it's gonna get destroyed or the press is gonna get damaged. Needless to say, there are a lot of moving parts here, both figuratively and very literally, but the best way to learn something is kind of just to start doing it. I figured the best way to go about that is to print something that's relatively low impact, something that's pretty easy, and also something that's for myself. So that way, if I make a bunch of mistakes, it does doesn't really matter because today my main focus isn't really the shirts it's more how to operate this machine and film it at the same time and find the angles I want to find and just learn how to make a good video with this thing we're running with the rogue lab Bushido tee today which is one of the best-selling shirts that we've ever made for rogue lab which by the way you're gonna be able to buy these things at the end of this video or even right now stop the video and pick one up the link is down in the description below simple design two color front two color back the only thing that was complex about it was coming up with the proper ink mixture to get the overlay thing to work out properly which I actually made a video all about like a year maybe two years ago you can click this thing up in the corner right here and go check that out if you want to know more about that otherwise though this is very simple we've got white shirt two screens for the front, two screens for the back. We're printing wet on wet, so no flashing, no Stampinator, none of that stuff. This is about as easy of a thing as I could come up with to do in this shop, aside from a one color print, which nobody would give a shit about watching. So this will allow me to really focus in on operating the machine properly while filming, and at the same time, still produce a cool product in the end. And this is also gonna be my very first screen printing video in the new shop, I just realized. I don't know how that didn't click in my head until right now. I'm a little bit more excited for this, so let's get started. quickly figuring out that this isn't just a video about learning how to operate and shoot this auto. It's a video about learning how to shoot everything in this new shop because this is the first time I've filmed a screen printing video in here. This is my first time printing films, exposing screens, using the PRU, the washout, all this stuff on camera. And it's been an entire year since the last time I shot a full-blown screen printing video, which is pretty crazy. But even though it's been that long and I'm doing it in a brand new space right now, it still feels like I never left. I am completely at home in this moment. However, I have noticed that there is a lot of cool new creative opportunities in here for this kind of stuff, so 
I'm feeling extra motivated for the future right now. Anyways, really pumped on how the screens came out, especially this one right here, because there is a lot of fine detail in this thing. With this design, I always had to use a dual cure emulsion because of the light source that I had in my old exposure unit. And dual cure emulsion, it does pack in a hell of a lot more detail, but it comes at a cost of uh, taking a lot longer to expose. On the old exposure unit, dual cure would run anywhere between three and a half to four minutes of screen, depending on the mesh count, which if you're doing a lot of screens, that shit really adds up. But now with this badass new exposure unit that I have here that has a single point light source, which is much more high powered, much more focused, I was able to use a photopolymer emulsion on this design and not lose any of that detail. All the fine line work is crisp as hell, and I was able to expose the screen in seven seconds. So the difference between three and a half, four minutes and seven seconds is obviously pretty huge. So that actually unknowingly ended up being a great test to see what kind of a design detail baseline I have using this setup, using photopolymer emulsion. Now I know that 90% of the work that I do here every day can happen on photopolymer at least, and I'm gonna save a crap load of setup time. And of course, we'll dive deeper into that and find out how much detail we can hold and what its limitations are in a future video. But now, it's auto time. Right, the press is set and we're ready to go. We're starting off with the back print first because anytime I print a job, I always like to start off with whatever's most difficult or more likely to give me problems. And because this is my favorite piece of artwork that we've ever put out with our name on it and I haven't seen it printed on a shirt in two years, so I'm not waiting anymore. And since we're on the topic of artwork, now would be a good time to mention that this video is sponsored by our old friends at Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community filled with all kinds of classes to help you step up your creative game. You wanna learn how to create artwork like this? Of course you do, who wouldn't? It's awesome. Well, in order to create artwork like this, you're gonna need a strong foundation in Adobe Illustrator. Well, you can start learning that foundation by taking this Adobe Illustrator Essentials course by Daniel Scott. And you can take this course along with thousands of other courses for free right now for the next month by clicking the link in the description below. So make sure to check that out. That's where I've learned a ton of my Adobe Illustrator knowledge over the past five or six years that I've been a Skillshare member and who doesn't like free stuff? All right, let's get the show on the road and print some cool shit. So far, so good. I managed to get all of these printed and film it without making a single mistake, and I didn't get tagged by a pallet arm or something, so we're doing all right. The thing that did happen, though, which I'm not thrilled about, is out of the 60 shirts that I had to print here today, I had to toss 10 of them away, and that's just what I've caught so far working on the press. They all either had a giant hole in them, or they were covered in dirt, or oil, or bug shit, or something like that. There was just a bunch of little brown dots all over them, or pen marker marks, whatever. It was... It was crazy having to toss a sixth of my inventory as I was printing. So Bella and Canvas, you guys need to get your shit together because this is not the first time this has happened to me in the last couple of months and I'm pretty sure I'm just straight up not gonna use them in my shop for a little while because they're massively expensive and this is happening way too often. Anyways, my bitching aside, I feel pretty good so far. I got some pretty cool shots, I think. I'm not gonna know until I edit this thing, but I feel pretty good shooting so far. Haven't made any real mistakes printing, so I'm feeling confident. Let's move on to the front prints.
smooth sailing on that side of the shirt, so all that's left now is to print some neck labels in these things. Hell yeah. These shirts turned out so sick. I have printed these things before, so this isn't really a surprise to me by any means, but this is my favorite piece of artwork we've ever done, and I haven't seen this on a shirt in two years, so it's really exciting to see it again. If you want one, make sure to click the thing down below. But I feel like I learned a lot today. Shooting this thing while flying solo and operating it at the same time is definitely no joke. I was doing a hell of a lot of mental gymnastics up here the entire time trying to figure out how to make it all work. I did manage to figure out a couple of cool tricks to let this thing run while I was running laps around it, getting the shots that I wanted. Definitely not perfected by any means, but it's something to build off of. Finding all the angles to shoot this thing from, which I definitely didn't find them all. I maybe found this much, but felt like kind of a mixed bag. Some of them felt like they were really cool. Other ones felt like eh, maybe not. So I'm just gonna apologize right now in advance for the ones that suck, but I think there are a couple of workarounds that I can employ to get the stuff that I want, maybe by using a longer lens, like a 70 to 200, so I can get in tighter on stuff without worrying about getting in the way of the press. And that lens is only, what, $3,500, so not too pumped that my brain went there, but it's gotta happen now. And then I started thinking of ways I could use like 360 cams or mounting GoPros all over this thing or maybe a cable cam or flying my drone in here. I don't know, my brain is exploding with ideas right now, so I can assure you that over the next six months, the auto videos are going to vastly improve. Otherwise, it was really cool to finally make use of this entire new shop on camera for the first time. It's been a long time coming, and just like with the auto, I'm gonna have a lot to learn about finding the right angles and the right way to do things in here. It's not like the old shop where I shot thousands of hours of video and I knew every square inch of that place and how to shoot it correctly. This is all brand new, so it's gonna take me a little bit of time to figure it out, but I gotta say, it feels so damn good to be back in the flow making screen printing videos again after a year off. Oh, so good. There's nowhere to go but up from here. I'm eager to start editing and check out what I got here today. So I'm gonna wrap this one up right here. Please make sure to click the like button down below for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you again in the next one. Oh, you idiot. <laughs> well, I guess I messed up that shot. Oh, giant fucking hole. Oh, stains everywhere. Also nice. What the fuck is that? Another one. Are you serious? Another one. This one too. Garbage. Another one. Garbage. Ugh. Get me sick of this. Aw, oh, you bastard. I knew it was coming. <laughs>